why we do in container gardening um, and then, you know, some more details. Um, there's lots of reasons to do a container gardening. Um, one of them would just be, you know, just, you know, you have a pretty container or a spot that you want a container to, to showcase something sort of a just aesthetic purpose. Um, I personally love window boxes. Uh, I really think they add a lot of um, um, drama to, uh, to a house particularly. Um, sometimes you have a shady spot or a, a patio or something where you want to have a living, just to add a little pizzazz into a, a patio area. Um, you could have an area, this is a, a balcony garden, you know, so you could have a, it could be an apartment or a condo um, where you just don't have access to, to in-ground soil. Um, um, containers, this is my sister's garden in New Jersey. She wanted a, a barrier from her next door neighbors. And as you can see, her driveway went right up to the fence. So she had no soil to to plant in, so she bought these inexpensive containers and put bamboo grasses in them, and had a you know instant screen. It really works quite well for her. Um, you know, it's another example of using bamboo in a container for screening. Um, this is a, a home garden that I was in in Scotland, where people just use the containers to just to decorate a you know fairly mundane and unsightly wall. Um, Here's another example of just, you know, decorating something using containers to decorate a, uh, mm -hmm. a space. Um, for people who um, don't have the ability to reach to the ground level, having containers that are raised up above ground provides them the ability to, to go, do gardening where they might not ordinarily be able to do that. Um, and it's just a beautiful way. This is another view of a, um, um, a balcony garden, you know, just a way of enhancing or beautifying a, a space. Um, and it's also a way of, um, um, if you have a, a plant, you know, something like fig plants um, that don't, um, aren't hardy in our zone, it's a way of um, being able to grow it and then just bringing it indoors or into the into a greenhouse or into a garage or someplace where it can stay safely um, through the cold winter. Um, it's great for plants like mints. Anybody who's ever tried growing mint in the ground knows how rapidly it spreads. So putting um, things like mints in a container is a really great way of um, growing them and containing them. Um, also, if you have a place where there's a lot of roots, um, containers are a great, great way of growing plants where it's really, really hard to grow something in the ground. Or if you just have a place where it's shady or the um, soil is not good and you just want to put something, a little pizzazz. Or if you want to just grow things, something unusual like a, um, you know, a dry garden. Um, you can um, easily put that inside of a container or a water garden. Um, that's another, you know, the other alternative is you want to grow water plants um, and you don't really want to, you know, you have a pond or a place to do that. You can just have a little spot on your uh, patio or deck where you can make a little mini water, water garden. Um, I, this is my house and I um, have this little, um, uh, container on my patio, which is closer to my back door. So I put my lettuce and um, some of my herbs in it just because it's closer to my back door than the vegetable garden. So it's just easier access. And this uh, is someone I know who lives in Providence who um, the sunniest, her backyard was all shady and she wanted to grow vegetables, so she ended up putting them in her front yard in containers. So this is just, you know, you know array of examples of uh, ways that you can use containers. Oh, this is from two years ago. Um, choosing a container. There's all kinds of options for containers. You probably, you know, have seen it in magazines, read about it on the internet. 
there's two things that really a container needs two elements one is that it has to be able to hold a so hold soil or so, you know um soil mix and then it has to be able to drain i made the mistake myself uh, buying a pot and forgot to puncture the hole at the bottom. Sometimes you buy pots that can be either indoors or outdoors and you have to remember to puncture the drainage hole on the bottom so that it drains. Otherwise you have a flood in your container. Uh, you know, and here's the vast array of containers that you can buy, uh, you know, at all kinds of stores. Um, and, or you can get creative. Um, so this, this is, somebody who took an old recycling bin and just covered it with burlap. And as you know, because the, the, our old recycling bins, we stop using them. They actually work really well for as a container um, because they already have the holes in the bottom and they're nice and big and deep. So they work really great. Uh, here's another creative idea. Someone took an older door and put some holes in it. I thought that was a really clever way of making a little, uh, a table in a patio area, taking an old pallet, using it as for a vertical garden. You know, so you know, just an endless number of things that you can use for containers. This is just something I saw on the east side, uh, you know, just a shoe container. Um, things on a window box. I, I uh, have this picture here to caution you to um, beware of these things with the, I forgot what they're called, the, um, these liners. Uh, it, um, there's nothing in there that holds the water in place. So it's basically like planting in a colander because the, when you water it, the water just goes right through. So this is the one kind of container I would advise not using. I actually tried uh, lining it with plastic for my, my neighbor asked me to do a thing for it. I tried lining it with plastic and it, it worked better than not having it, but it still was didn't work that great. The other thing I would caution against is containers that are too small. Um, this is a window box. It's only about three inches, literally only about three inches deep. Uh, wide and then only about three inches deep. So it's really hard to get things to grow. You know, plants need roots and, you know, their roots have to be established. So it's really hard to get things to grow well in a tiny space. And it's also very hard to water it. Things that the smaller a container is, the quicker it's going to dry out. So yes, you can plant in any kind of container, but um, I always advise people to put it, plant things in the biggest container that you can have. Um, it just gives you much more flexibility, doesn't dry out as quickly, and generally uh, plants will bear much better in a larger container. I like um, self-watering containers that have a little bit of a water reservoir on the bottom of it so that if you forget to water for a couple days, you know, if you're going away for the weekend or going you probably manage for three or four days, depending on what the weather is or how hot it is, but it just gives you a little bit of a safeguard, um, you know, in, in case of a dry spill. Um, I don't know what that is. Um, but the, the, another way of um, doing that yourself is actually just putting different things in the bottom of a container that will hold water. Um, I sometimes just put empty containers, uh, empty plant containers on the bottom, just anything on the bottom of the container that will act as a, as a reservoir for water will work quite well. Um, another uh, use for containers is for decorating throughout the season. You know, you could do it during the, during the um, of course, and during the summer, but continuing through the fall and then through the winter season. Um, and then the array of containers are um, the clay containers and then the ceramic containers, the glaze containers. Um, generally, um, the unglazed containers are better for things that like to be dry because they the, 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 the um, unglazed containers will dry out much faster. 
So those are good for things that don't mean mind being dry and the glazed containers are better for um, things that um, like to stay moist. This is a metal container. The, again, I would advise against using metal things like this that are metal containers because they are narrow. Um, if they're in the sun, they heat up really fast and they dry out really fast too. Um, in the shade, it may be not so bad, but in the sun, combination of having metal and the dark, dark surface, uh, in my experience, they, they are really difficult um, to keep watered. All right, what are we gonna put in the container? Um, I, if you have a container that's gonna be out year round, I oftentimes um, will line a container with the insulation uh, material just to give it an, an extra layer of protection through a cold winter season. Uh, I mentioned before about this is another way of doing a self-watering system where you can just fill the bottom of a container with any any sort of empty containers. Uh, most plant roots won't go down much more than 12 inches, but even even with the empty containers, there's room for plant roots to grow. But it also gives you a place for water to um, build up and you know sort of act as a reservoir and then um, the soil um, there's a gazillion soil potting mixes available um, nowadays at all the big box stores um, and you know it's it's um, good to have one that's uh, if you have a unique situation where you're either dry, growing something that um, needs a dry soil or a wet soil, there's you know a variety of different ones. Otherwise, you can just use the general potting mix. Um, and most of them nowadays, it used to be that they did come with um, fertilizer in them, but nowadays it's hard to buy them that don't have fertilizer in them. So most, almost all of them have the fertilizer already in the mix but um if you want to save money um it's actually this is a good way of making your own potting soil which is a combination of um topsoil which you can buy um vermiculite or some kind of builder sand to just improve the drainage, uh, drainage and then adding either peat moss or compost to just um help with the fertility of the the soil And then, of course, if you and if you do that, then you have to, you know, it's good to add your own um, slow-released fertilizer, which will, this, you know, anywhere from six to nine months. Um, the these fertilizers, they they are slow-release fertilizers. So if you mix it in with the with your soil mix, if you buy a potting soil that doesn't have it added, or if you're using your own mix, it's good to add, add that. Now. Um, designing and, and planting with what you put in the container. Um, one of the biggest things that people don't realize is um, that all plants have unique, oh, by and large, have unique situations where they do best in, whether it's sun or shade, moist or dry. So, and uh, many people do not read plant tags. I'm, I'm as guilty of that as, as all, but, if you look at the plant tag and see what the conditions are that, um, and then think about where your container is gonna be, um, that's really, really helpful and crucial actually. Not only the, the but also the size also, how, how big is it gonna get, how wide is it gonna get in addition to what the sun requires, sun and water requirements are. Uh, so here's an example of a container actually that was in a high-end nursery and it had a combination of plants that really preferred being in the shade with plants that prefer being in the sun. So if you put it in a shade, shady spot, the sun plants are gonna do, not do well. And if you put it in a sunny spot, the shade plants aren't gonna do well. So it's really, it really is important to look at the plants and see what their requirements are and make sure that all the plants in the containers in the container meet the requirements of whatever position you're gonna be putting them in. 
the general design um, theory for planting uh, containers is this, these three, three, three things, uh, filler, thriller, and spiller. So the, the thriller is usually something that's upright, that adds some kind of drama to a container. This is if you're doing container just for aesthetic reasons. Uh, the filler is just a, some kind of plant that's going to uh, fill in the space. And then, and then the spiller is uh, something that will tumble over the side of it. So just a nice way of uh, keeping that in mind when you're picking out plants for a container. So here's an example of that, this um, container in the middle um, as a uh, kind of fern that's kind of a focal point. And you can see how really interesting it is, this combining the different textures and colors. It's all just, these are all just all tropical plants in the shade, but it's really, really effective um, way of using plants um, um, with that theory in mind, just a combination of textures and colors. And even just having two plants in a container can be really beautiful. Just, you know, just an upright fern and something spilling over the sides, just beautiful. And you can even just put one plant in a container, depending on what you're growing. You know, um, I even have an, um, we grow, grow different herbs in containers. We talked about mint before, but there's other other herbs that you can grow in containers. So just, uh, just putting one in a container. Um, can be quite effective. This is an example of just one, one beautiful plant in a, in a container. And, um, you know, if you're in a situation like an apartment or balcony, you can also use containers almost like a garden, combining uh, evergreens. If you have a big enough container, uh, evergreens, um, shrubs, uh, perennials, flowering shrubs, um, perennials and annuals. So you can really just create a whole garden inside of a, a container. Um, you know, of course, we're familiar with that with houseplants, um, combining all these different textures and elements in a houseplant container. And you can use those same things outside. Um, I love using, actually, I love using houseplants in containers. You, it's easy to Either take cuttings if you grow house plants, taking cuttings from them early in the spring um, and um, sticking them. Most, most house plants like a shady spot, but it's an easy economical way of, um, of growing something outdoors in a shady spot. And uh, in the fall, um, this is an example of continuing in the fall elements, uh, you know, combining different elements in the fall landscape, other than just mums. Another example of a fall um, container combining different, different elements. Another one just to, and then, and then winter time, I, which is actually one of my favorite times, favorite things to do as a winter container because you don't have to worry about things staying alive. So it's just easy to just pop in all kinds of different greens and berries and cones and sticks and everything. I love doing winter containers. Um, and it's it's nice to be creative too without you know doing traditional ones. Um, um, sometimes I combine that purple um, thing is actually a fake plant, but sometimes I combine fake uh, plants in with natural plants. Another example of that. And, uh, you know, at the winter time, I like sometimes doing things that are not non-traditional so that it carries through the season. It's not just a Christmas or holiday container. It carries through to the, through the whole winter. There's so many beautiful different kinds of evergreens. It's really fun to, to uh, combine all those. Another example, sometimes I, um, you can put lighting in a container too. Uh, this is just a spotlight that's um, um, plugged in and centered in the middle of the container. And yeah, this is one I, I do at my house. It's really a beautiful way of this uplighting into a container is really pretty way of making a container a focal point.
You can do it really year round, but it's especially nice at the holiday season. Um, and um, again, being mindful of um, the dryness. This is a concrete container and um, it's really important. The concrete containers really dry up fast. So it's really important to put things in a container that are suitable for the containers. This is something that's really drought, old drought tolerant plants. We talked about. So this is um, uh, a window box in my own house as I'm showing um, filling the container with empty pots. And the other thing that's helpful to do when you're buying plants is to um, loosen up the root balls. Um, oftentimes when you buy a plant, you it's root bound. If you've ever grown a house plant, you know what happens when a house plant gets root bound. Um, so it's really helpful to loosen up the root ball. And I just use a, a serrated knife to do that. And, you know, putting them down, uh, pushing them down deeply into the soil um, is important. This is, um, um, on the top is the container that I had before the, the window box and the one in the bottom is the new one that I, I replaced it with. Um, so even the small, even that bigger one. So this new one that I got, it's a self-watering one, and it's really made such a, a big difference in my. It's lower maintenance, and it just looks so much more attractive um, because you can put more and more plants in, and you don't have to worry about watering them. It's also important when you're um, planting a container to leave at least a half inch, maybe three quarters of an inch at the top of it, so that water. Um, when you're watering it, you have a place for water to collect. I've made that mistake where I filled the soil all the way to the top and it makes it really, really tricky trying to water it. And if you have a big enough container, sometimes it's helpful, if you, particularly if it's vegetables. Um, we didn't really talk that much about vegetables, but you know, it's uh, really, really easy to grow vegetables in, in containers. Um, I actually have, uh, Container in my back. I'm doing uh, climbing um, beans and radishes and cucumbers in containers. Uh, here's a, and you know tomatoes oftentimes work really well in, in containers as long as you keep them watered. Containers need to be maintained just like uh, any like a a garden. Um, so we talked about the slow release fertilizer. That if it's not in the potting soil, that you should add it when you're planting. And then I usually uh, a few times during this um, season, maybe like once a month, we'll also add a, a water soluble plant uh, fertilizer, um, you know, either one, either, you know, one of the fish fertilizers or, um, you know, really any kind just to sort of give it a little extra boost during the season. Um, and of course, watering is keenly important, particularly if your containers are in a um, dry spot or dry in a full sun. Uh, it's just, and depending on the size, you know, the smaller the container, the faster they're gonna dry out. So it's super important to keep on top of watering. If you're going away from vacation, there's all kinds of nifty ideas that you can find on the internet for um, keeping them watered. So this is one where there's sort of like a wicking system where you can put some kind of um, like a uh, material into a basin of water and connect it up into your pots. And then um, with your plants, um, a lot of plants need to be, most plants need to be pruned. This is a coleus and it's really helpful to um, snip the top of it so it doesn't get too leggy. The same with lots of things like even basil, it's really helpful to um, harvest the top of it. Um, it makes it more bushy and um, 
um, really, you know, keeps it from flowering, which with, with certain plants like basil or um, even coleus, you don't really want the flowers. And that is, that's the end of the thing. So that again, this is the uh, information about the master gardeners and all the kinds of things that they do. Um, they have a uh, wonderful hotline that you can call if you have any kind of questions and, uh, and there's a plant protection clinic at URI where you can send in plant samples if you have any questions. And then all kinds of information about native plants, which is really a wonderful thing to learn about in your gardens. Mm -hmm.